Welcome back, nerds. Fino here with a guide for Mananen's Souvenir Valentines, the chocolate tree and the goddess's choice. It's this year's Valentine's event. You know what that means. Chocoramus is back. I mean, the point ladder's back. You'll be accumulating bodyguard points this time around. As you pile your way up the ladder, you get chocolates and command codes, among other things. The craft essence, thank you for your hard work, will amplify your bodyguard point drops. So stick them on your team as soon as you unlock them. You get four copies from the shop. Until then, keep a few Valentine CEs as placeholder point boosters. Those you get by giving your random and lock-on chocolates to your various servants. Once you do, they'll show you a voiced cutscene and then pay you back with the craft essence. After the event ends, feed any Valentine chocolate CEs to your powerful craft essences or sit on them to use on options like cranking, if you happen to have space. The exception is mashes, which you cannot get back in subsequent events. I'd recommend using lock-on chocolates for Lost Belt 6 servants, newcomers, and your favorites if you haven't participated in previous Valentine's events. I can personally vouch for Oberon's cutscene being amazing, if you know which dialogue options to pick. The catch is that you need to finish Lost Belt 6 to see it. The other LB6 servants don't have this restriction, by the way, aside from Habitrot, who only enters the summoning pool after completing Avalon Le Fay. Separate from bodyguard points, there are buddy points. As your servants stay in the party, they accumulate buddy points and their buddy rank goes up. The closer they are to the leftmost side of your team at the start of a fight, the more points they get. At certain thresholds, their attack and bond bonuses will go up. The practical benefits max out at 100% for each category, which corresponds to an EX buddy rank. Higher ranks exist, but they just seem to be for show. If it helps you decide, the 90 plus note for this event has a 1-3-3 caster arrangement, so depending on how you opt to deal with the 1, arch riders like Surf Mo, Da Vinci, and Habitrot, or one of the good buster loopers might be good candidates for you to keep in your early parties. You may also want to consider a really good AoE saber for the challenge quest, but we'll get back to that. There are also special quests that grant you teapots on completion. These are consumables that amplify your bond gain for a single fight. They also expire after some time, so pick your timing for these carefully. I believe the current set is slated to expire towards the end of February, but don't quote me on that. The command codes for this event are pretty interesting. Flower of the Underworld has anti-undead damage, which is super niche, but anti-codes like this are nice to have, given the flexibility they offer. Demonic Lance and Reverse Causality grants sure hit and crit damage. Especially if you lack the older Involn Pierce codes, it's better to have it than not. The Gold Buddy Ring gives a single star on hit and a very small increase to your debuff resistance. It's mostly for show. You stick it on a servant to put a ring on it. Now let's talk about the challenge quest. Here you face off against Bazette and Ku Cullen. Bazette starts the fight by increasing your team's defense for three turns. This effect can be nullified by frontlining Angra mind you. The catch is that Angra is completely useless otherwise and you'd want to get him off the field ASAP. Also it's a 30% defense buff and a removable one at that, so you're probably better off just dealing with it through other means. For his part, Ku applies a permanent taunt to himself with some damage reduction. On first break, Ku gains an increased instant kill success chance. On second break, he gains 3 stacks of guts and enmity-based damage, so the lower his health, the harder he hits. Be aware that Ku can use protection from arrows to make your life infinitely harder, so having someone with sure hit or invuln pierce can save you a lot of trouble. The guts revives him with around 25k health, so it may be prudent to stun him just before you start breaking them. By chaining a regular attack into a noble phantasm and then another regular attack, you can pop all three in one turn. If he's stunned, he won't have a chance to pop his regular guts or mangle your frontline. If Bazette is ready to NP, Ku will buff her defense to reduce her incoming damage. For her part, Bazette can accelerate Lancer's charge by two ticks and, on a separate skill, give him 30% attack and defense. Fragrock counters your attacks for massive damage, so you're better off playing Grabaz as much as you can when it's up. If you're running the Himiko Immortal team, for instance, you can just chain NPs on Fragrock turns to waste it, but you'd have to deal with more Gay Ball RNG as a consequence of a longer fight. Once you break Bazette's bar, she gains five turns of increased attack and Invuln Pierce, which will restrict your options for surviving Fragrock. If you're worried, I'd wait until she's on an empty meter to break her bar. Ibuki Doji seems especially well suited for this fight, since she bypasses every form of mitigation the two can muster, aside from the flat damage cut. If you happen to have me on your friend list, I'll be putting mine up for the duration of the event. Otherwise, consider grabbing someone Sherlock to give your team legs to fight on for at least a few turns. But with that said, thanks for watching. Stick around because I'll be doing a servant guide slash mythology segment on Manan and McLear soon. Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and come on to me on twitch.tv slash Tyson where I stream every week, 3pm Pacific time. Got one hell of a lineup this time around. I've posted the schedule on my community tab if you want a peek. See you there.